to be changed. We have no choice. They have so out-negotiated our people because our people are babies. They have no idea what they're doing. They will find out that if I win, we're not babies. There's no more being babies anymore. First of all, we needed people that negotiate properly, not a guy like Kerry who doesn't have a clue. But, and we will have those people. I know those people. I think it's maybe the worst deal I've ever seen. I think it's the worst deal I've ever seen negotiated. I will be so tough on them, and ultimately that deal will be broken unless they behave better than they've ever behaved in Thank their lives, Trump. which is probably unlikely. Senator that Cruz deal will Senator be broken. Rubio. My number one priority is to dismantle the disastrous deal with Iran. Welcome back. Most conservatives hate the Iran nuclear deal, and as you just heard, so did candidate Donald Trump. But twice now, including again just this week, the Trump administration has certified that Iran is keeping its end of the bargain. Now, the White House did leak out yesterday that the president almost declared Iran in violation. But almost isn't good enough for national security hawks. And the new line from the Trump White House, well, it's, well, maybe things will go the other way at the next deadline. You know what the campaign pledge was, right? It was rip it up. Well, when I'm yeah, president, and, and I'll rip it up. So how, that's, how does this White House address that comment now? By, by exactly what we're doing right now. We are not committed to any more recertifications of this deal in the future. This is a thing. This is a technical requirement on a bad deal we inherited that we didn't close. Remember, this is the Obama regime yeah, deal. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gorka. Uh, twice blaming Obama. Yes, the Obama administration negotiated the deal. That's a fact. Uh, they've been in office six months now. They have twice certified Iran in compliance. Now, Sebastian Gorka knows the conservative criticism, uh, and he's saying, well, maybe next time we won't. Well, and this is, this is you know, part 782 of, you know, the ongoing series of things look different once you're in the White House, right? I mean, NAFTA was also the worst deal in the world. It was apparently a multi-way tie. Uh, and that hasn't gone anywhere either. Um, and even the attempts at renegotiating have been, uh, have not gone anywhere to date. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Iran deal is interesting because it does provoke a lot of people who are conservatives. It, it's huh. not only the people in the middle. And the other thing is you heard Trump in that clip saying the only way we would keep it is if they were, are behaving perfectly better than they've ever huh. behaved. That's not what the administration said to justify this. In fact, they said Iran right. is in violation of the spirit of the deal. So it's not that they're behaving perfectly, and yet they're keeping the deal. And yet they're keeping the deal. Obamacare is in place. Uh, Iran deal is in place. But hey, you know, he shredded the last remaining credibility of the mainstream media. You know, I, I don't know how that fits on a 2020 bumper sticker, but there you go. They'll try. Yeah. Uh, I just, to your point, I, I understand there are many things. You, uh, and running for president is very different than being president. You see this from every president. They run saying they're going to do things like close Guantanamo Bay if you're Barack Obama, uh, and it doesn't happen. Uh, Bill Clinton was running against the butchers in Beijing, had very good relations with China. So every president, especially on foreign policy, has big adjustments. So what makes this interesting is the blowback from the conservatives. Uh, who thought, who thought at least, if not for Trump, when they got Vice President Pence, uh, that they would have somebody pushing their way. I just want to read you from the National uh, Review op-ed. This schizophrenic policy is ultimately unsustainable. There's no reason why the Trump administration should bolster Iran's gains by propping up a bad deal and perpetuate the fantasy that Iran is abiding, or even intended to abide, by the terms of its agreement. Candidate Donald Trump declared that he would dismantle the disastrous deal with Iran. That was a good plan then. And it still is. And yet, my, my question is, when you have, you are six months in, next year will be the midterm election year, when you have the foreign policy hawks voicing their displeasure. Uh, we see the luncheon going on right now at the White House where you have this fracturing of the party over health care. Uh, can the president put together the pieces, the, he inherited this, this is, a lot of this was fractured before he came along, it's not all his doing, but can he head into a midterm election year if you continue to have, today it's foreign policy, yesterday it's health care, down the road that we have tax reform, we have infrastructure, this fracturing of his own party? I think on this issue he would be smart to actually go with his instincts potentially because right now the fight, as managing the fight is between the administration, McMaster, Mattis, people like that who say stick with this for now, this is the sort of normal foreign policy decision and the pull out of it because you don't, because it's a campaign promise and I don't, I think actually, I can see him actually doing this. The feels me the policies are like the, like the Paris deal where actually might, right. it might annoy people in Washington that he gets out of it, it might be the right thing to do and it might sort of bolster his base and I still think he can do this later on in the next two years and I think he will. Healthcare. You, you, Healthcare is, I think, what's going to, I don't think the, the Iran deal is going to drive, it, okay. every, everything being how it is right now, right, in the midterm elections, it's going to be the health care issue. If they're not able to do that, that's going to depress uh, voters uh, uh, who would normally come out for uh, uh, 
as we head into this, 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 this fact, I just want to get John Bolton, who was considered for a job in the Trump administration, didn't get it. Very conservative, former UN ambassador. The Trump's transition team should have identified abrogating the deal as the one of the incoming administration's highest policy priorities. The administration itself has already shown the courage of its convictions by withdrawing from the Paris Accord. Compared to that, abrogating, that's the technical term, JCPOA there, is a one-inch putt, and yet it didn't happen. So we'll watch that continuing the criticism from the right on that deal. Up next, though,